how do you kind of differentiate between those two? Maybe who would benefit more from like a maybe more meshy type versus some of the, because I know a lot of people think like arthritis, you need all sorts of structure. You need, you know, these leather shoes, you need, you know, all the support. So what would kind of be the difference between those two and kind of how you choose what shoe would maybe be best? I mean, first and foremost, I think it comes down to what the client wants, right? Okay. You know, do they want something that they're going to use for like running or walking? Um, I mean, which a walking shoe could be a leather upper, right? Or it could be a mesh upper. It doesn't really matter. I mean, most running shoes, obviously, this is a running, this, this being a running shoe here. So I'm trying to figure out no, which way okay. my camera is pointing so I can actually show you what that is. Uh, so this is a kind of a suede leather upper. Uh, but it really comes down to what the client is going to be using it for. You know, if they're going to spend a lot of time outdoors in, in kind of the wintertime, rainier months, you know, they probably want maybe a leather upper or a Gore-Tex, you know, mesh design, right? Uh, keep in mind that sometimes when you have like a Gore-Tex lining, which is a waterproof lining for the shoes, inside the shoes, what ends up happening is that it doesn't necessarily allow the, um, you know, foot to breathe as well, but also the material tends to be a bit stiffer, right? So a Gore-Tex okay. material lining inside the shoe is going to be a bit stiffer and it's going to be very difficult to stretch. So let's say you have somebody that has rheumatoid arthritis, severe toe deformities, uh, and they have hammer toes and overlapping toes and all these different things, a lot of rubbing going on on the feet. That may not be the most appropriate shoe for them unless you can get it maybe in a wide fitting that gives you some extra depths, right? So that's one okay. thing I didn't really bring up here yet is extra depths. Um, you know, footwear in general uh, oftentimes comes in the leather version, obviously, as a walking shoe, so you can kind of wear it year round. Uh, okay. And uh, the purpose of an extra depth shoe is that it has an added depth inside the footwear. Usually they add, oh. you know, the way they design it, and I don't have an example of it, but, you know, a last of a shoe looks kind of like a foot. And that's basically what the shoe is built around, right? So it has kind of a foot type shape. And then when they design it for an extra depth shoe, they will add an extra layer on the bottom, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch, depending on how much extra room they want to create inside the footwear, right? So it doesn't necessarily change the width of the shoe that much, but it does change the depth of the footwear. And that means that you have more room for hammer toes. You have more room for, you know, different, uh, obviously, toes. Uh, that needs some accommodation and in some brands like the drew brand here you can oftentimes you'll, you'll get two insoles in here as well so there's okay. I mean, that's the original insole and there's an, an additional insole that's put inside the shoe also to uh, allow you to remove so you can create more room if you have a lot of swelling or you know maybe you need more room down the road as the foot changes you can take one of those okay. insoles out to create more space right so that there's brands like that out there as well that have those uh, those options right but, um, and, and also keep in mind the type of activity we're gonna be doing, right? So if you're doing tennis, if you're doing, you know, any kind of, you know, aerobic sidestepping activities, usually mesh shoes are not structured, right? Because they're designed for forward motion, right? So they're not designed to kind of like jump side to side and do a lot of these types of movements. And then the purpose of that is to really be able to, you know, focus on uh, that forward momentum and you don't need to have that extra structure around the toe area right here. Whereas a, a cross training shoe, which can have a mesh upper, but oftentimes will have reinforcements of, uh, uh, I mean, in may, many of these shoes nowadays, they're using some kind of the um, uh, polyurethane type lining on the top, right? Okay. So that creates more structure, it's a firmer material, and it's designed to give that, that mesh a little bit more reinforcement so that it reduces the potential side to side shifting off the foot when you're stepping sideways, right? Or a lot of cross training shoes will be made out of a leather material as well. So you gotta keep in mind that there's different types of activities that will have different sport and you know, different types of shoes. Just like if you play soccer, you're not gonna be running around in a running shoe, you're gonna be using a soccer cleat, right? So that it has that appropriate material upper to uh, allow you to, to play, that, play that sport properly, right? Yeah.